Greetings, I'm Les Pollard, president of Oakwood University, and I welcome you to Windows on the Word. Windows on the Word is coming to you today from the beautiful campus of Oakwood University and from the Peters Media Center, where we house the Oakwood University Broadcast Network. Today, we're looking at very important topics, especially related to Black History Month. And I'm honored today to recognize, of course, two of my dear colleagues here at Oakwood University who will participate in this conversation on black history. First, I want to start with Dr. Marcia Burden, who is a yes. professor here at Oakwood University yes. uh, and a trained attorney, and she teaches in our history department and uh, does just a magnificent job. Welcome, doctor. Thank you so much, President Pollard, for having me. Thank you, it's our pleasure to have you. And then, of course, a mainstay is one of our resident theologians, the dean of our School of Theology, Dr. Clifford Jones is here today. Doc, we welcome you once again, thank you. Thank you, Dr. Pollard. I'm deeply honored and blessed to be here to participate in this very important conversation. Uh, thank you, thank you. Well, let's just jump right in. Mm -hmm. Black History Month, a time when we turn the focus and the spotlight on the accomplishments, the opportunities, and even the future mm -hmm. of America's black citizens. It's a wonderful celebration. Of course, one of the highlights of Black History Month is as you approach it, you get to hear many, many, many great speeches and Dr. Martin Luther King included. So we want to just mm -hmm. kind of think a little bit about his speech today and talk about what it might mean for for those who are living in the present and as we move into the future. August 28th, 1963, I have a dream. Mm. Considered one of the greatest orations ever delivered in the English language. Yes. When you think about that speech, Professor, what do you think about? Is there any line particularly in that speech? And of course, anyone can Google the speech and read it. It's, it's so popular, it's so prevalent, so available. Any particular line that strikes you as something impactful even for today? I believe we have to start at the beginning. Okay, okay. The fact that he has a dream. Yes. A lot of people want to gloss over that oh. intro. Wow. But it's extremely powerful to yeah. dream. Amen. Because when we think about dreams, we think about possibilities that will one day become a reality. Wow. Say that again. Possibilities. Possibilities that wow. will one day become oh, a yeah. reality. And it begins with a dream. Yes. And it wow. begins wow. with a dream. You know, the Bible tells us to write the vision. Make it plain. And then we make it plain. Mm -hmm. right. Right, right. And so the fact that the Holy Spirit descended upon him with the possibility of a nation that's not divided mm -hmm. or separated, but that comes together, that works together to fulfill the great commission to serve, to help, to love, that he even had the capacity to accept the spirit. Wow. Dropping wow. in on him to have that dream. Wow. And the possibilities and the imagination that it can become a reality, I think that part is extremely powerful. Wow, wow, wow. Dr. Jones, you're a King scholar. So <laughs> tell, tell us a little bit about Martin Luther King, the person. I mean, he's just a remarkable figure, right? Yeah, yeah, a remarkable <clears throat> human being. A remarkable human who being. Who in the midst of oppression, discrimination, segregation, <clears throat> still had a dream. Mm -hmm. um, to me, when he said that, that I still have a dream. Yes. And that was the line in his speech. I still have a dream. Have a dream. In yes. spite of all of the in challenges. In spite of. I am not going to lose hope. I'm not going to give up. I'm not going to throw in the towel. Wow. I still have a dream. In other words, he's looking forward. Mm -hmm. He's looking forward to a better day. He is yes. going to work for mm -hmm. a better day. Yes. He's not going <clears> to <throat> accept what is currently being meted out mm -hmm. to him and to blacks. No, wow. I still have a dream. I'm going to be resilient. Mm -hmm. I'm going to be hopeful. Mm -hmm. I'm going to keep on pressing on. I'm going to look forward. I still have a dream. And the line that really stands out to me in that speech, that iconic speech, mm -hmm. is that he's looking forward to that day when his children, yeah. his, mm -hmm. his children, 
will be judged by the content of their character yeah. and not the c color of their skin. Wow. I wow. still have a dream. Hope. I mean, it bubbles, it radiates with hope, with optimism. I still have a dream. Oh, it's remarkable. It's remarkable, yeah. isn't it? Yeah. And, just, and, just remarkable. And, I, and, and, and the, the, the logic that says, I, I still have a dream, and it's deeply rooted in the American the dream. dream. Could you mm. tell us about the American dream? Wow, the American <laughs> dream, right? He said it's rooted. He said, my dream is rooted in the American dream. Yeah, we have to go back to the Constitution. Ah, the United okay. States the Constitution. Law, this yes. where the law training comes in. Of course, we have to take it back to the law and to uh -huh. our forefathers. That uh -huh. original governing document yeah. for us as law-abiding citizens, which I might add that the U.S. Constitution, as quiet as it's kept, mm -hmm. comes from the book of Deuteronomy in the Bible. Wow, wow, wow. Our country was founded on God. Yeah, yeah. It was founded from that Protestant evangelical movement. With an and acknowledgement that God is the foundation of government yeah. and et cetera, et cetera. <laughs> exactly. So when we think about the American dream, we have to go back to the preamble mm -hmm. of the Constitution. Mm -hmm. We the people. Mm -hmm. And we talk about life, liberty, and, and the pursuit, pursuit of happiness. happiness. So that American dream mm -hmm. is that no matter who you are, you can go to school. Yeah. from pre-K mm -hmm. all the way to 12th grade mm -hmm. for free. Wow. That's part of the American dream. That's the American dream. Mm -hmm. The American dream mm -hmm. is that you can become a homeowner. Mm -hmm. The American dream is that whatever you dreamed, yeah. the possibility yeah. can become a reality. If you mm -hmm. wanted to be a ballerina, mm -hmm. you can study at Juilliard. If you wanted to be a scientist, mm -hmm. you can study here at Oakwood University <laughs> and Amen. you can go work for NASA. Amen. If you wanted to be a preacher, mm -hmm. you can go and spread the gospel freely now mm -hmm. without persecution, mm -hmm. without ridicule. Mm -hmm. You can move, you can travel, you can have your being and exist 100% in completion with absolute freedom and it not only just exist, but excel. Wow. That's the American dream. That's the American dream. Yeah, Cliff. Now, it's interesting. It's an ironic uh -huh. in terms of dreams uh -huh. that the first wave of blacks who came to this country did mm -hmm. not come here dreaming. Nah. Right. Other Powerful. groups came dreaming. Yeah. Right? Europeans. Yes. They yes. came with dreams of working hard, mm -hmm. of uh, a better life. Yes, yes, mm -hmm. yes. Um, so forth and so on. The first wave of blacks who came here, mm -hmm. they came against their wills. Mm -hmm. mm. Involuntarily. Involuntarily. Mm -hmm. They were brought here as slaves mm -hmm. to provide labor. Mm -hmm. So it was only later that they began to dream. Yes. When they when they first came here, they they they, they, they were having nightmares. Mm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Nightmares because they came <laughs> as slaves Amen. and they what? were sold on auction blocks. Man, wasn't it Malcolm's speech? Malcolm's speech. He said, mm -hmm. "We didn't land on Plymouth Rock. Plymouth Rock landed on us." Remember? <laughs> yes. I mean, it, it it was really clever rhetorically. Mm -hmm. But but again, he's expressing he was expressing this notion that mm -hmm. we came involuntarily. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And yet, the framers. Mm. create a document uh -huh. mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. that even though it was not perfectly and still is yet to be perfectly implemented, right. it provided the seedbed yes. for the liberation of the, of the Negro, mm -hmm. didn't it? Right. That, that document, mm -hmm. even beyond where they were with Thomas Jefferson and George Washington, all of them being slaveholders, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. Holding enslaved persons. Mm -hmm. To me, that's the divinity in the process, Correct. that they created a document that ultimately would work against their own economic interests. Mm -hmm. Does that mm -hmm. make sense? Mm -hmm. Yeah, mm -hmm. it makes perfect sense because... Because who does that? When right. we right. say American dream, to your point, is the dream really offered to everyone? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What is considered American mm -hmm. would be the next question. Yes, yes. Is the color of your skin mm. or your racial or ethnic background mm -hmm. a <clears throat> part of defining American? And at the time that this mm -hmm. was framed, mm -hmm. the answer mm -hmm. was no. Right. The right. answer right. was, of course not. Right. These colored people, 
these enslaved persons, as they called us back mm -hmm. then, these colored people, are not citizens mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. will never be. Right. Mm -hmm. I mean, it was Abraham Lincoln in 1862 or three who convened four major black leaders at the White House to say, how am I gonna solve the, the Negro problem? Mm. And his answer was, I'm gonna send them, I'm gonna send some to Haiti, I'm gonna send some to Panama, Mm -hmm. And we're going to send some back to Liberia. Mm -hmm. We're going to send Africa. them away mm -hmm. because that's the way we solve the problem. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was Frederick Douglass who said, no, 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 no. I was born here, mm -hmm. Mr. President. Mm -hmm. My home is here. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What a bold declaration. Mm -hmm. yes. You know, because at one mm -hmm. point Lincoln was a part of the colonizing movement. Right. You know, recolonize right. the Negro because they will never fit in as long as they're wearing this they will never fit into the America mm -hmm. that we envision. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it was, he had to scrap the program because Mr. Douglas said, no, 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 I was born here. Right. I don't have another home. This is it. Reminds me of who was it that said that African-American history is American history. It's American history. Exactly. Black history is American it's history. American yes. history. It's, yes. That's yeah. right. It's we, an expression of We can't of drive America's a wedge between history. them. Separate them out. Right. Amen. Because yeah. our they country. They stand together or fall exactly. apart. Exactly. Our country stands mm -hmm. upon the hard work yeah. and labor Amen. of the enslaved people. Amen. Think There's about no the coming that. products that you use today. Who created them? That's right. So many. So many. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. many. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, we're having an engaging conversation, and it's a spiritual conversation, yes. because we can see the fingerprints of God in the liberation of the black peoples of America. And we were sent here, I, I'll never forget hearing Elder E.E. E. Cleveland say something so profound. Mm -hmm. He said that we were sent here to test the conscience of America. Uh, just a remarkable statement, and may he rest in peace. We thank God for his ministry. Today, as we close out this segment, we'll be right back, and we'll do a little bit deeper diving into the notion of the dream. We've yeah. got a great figure in the Bible who paralleled what Dr. King talked about, and that was Joseph, because Joseph mm. had a dream. Yeah. We'll see you when we come back. Why I'm here? I'm here because God has called and asked me to be here, and it's a privilege to serve Open University. It's not only a place where loveliness abounds, but it's a place where excellence abounds on a daily basis. Why am I here? Because it's a privilege, because God has asked, and I'm thankful for this opportunity to serve in this capacity. Well, I'm here now with again with uh, Dr. Marcia Burden and Dr. Clifford Jones here at Oakwood University. This is Windows on the Word, and we're engaged, as you can tell, we're engaged in a very passionate discussion about black history, about its spiritual foundations, and about U.S. history and the role, work, and ministry of Dr. Martin Luther King. Now, immediately when Dr. King launched into his soliloquy about I have a dream, standing behind him to his shoulder, uh, maybe to it on his left shoulder in, in the pictures, you can see a, a tall, stout, my mother named you say stout, a stout <laughs> lady with a beautiful hat on. It was Mahalia Jackson. Mm -hmm. And he was going on and on about the, the it, it, very prosaically about mm -hmm. his, his concerns for America, et cetera, et cetera. And you can hear, if you listen to the tape, she said, Tell him about the dream, Martin. Tell him mm -hmm. about the dream. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Because she had heard the I Have a Dream segment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oakwood University is blessed to have been one of the sites, March 19, 1962, mm -hmm. where Dr. King came to Oakwood's campus because he was disallowed from, in, from speaking anywhere in the state of Alabama. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> the governor had said he will never mm -hmm. speak on a public institution mm -hmm. before. And this is 1963. Mm -hmm. So this is when Dr. King, there are no holidays, there are no boulevards, mm -hmm. <laughs> none of that thing. Mm -hmm. He's a pariah, he's a communist, he's all these other <laughs> allegations are being made against him. Right. Mm -hmm. So he comes to Oakwood University, and if you are interested in finding out more, you can go to YouTube and you can, you can hear the speech that he actually delivered here at Oakwood University. And there are trace elements of I Have a Dream. Mm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So it's a wonderful, a wonderful experience, and we encourage you, of course, to, to look there. But now, when he announces his dream, immediately he's aligning himself 
with a biblical character. Oh, yes. yes. Mm-hmm. And Joseph. Yes. Mm-hmm. Joseph. God sent a man. God sent mm-hmm. a man. He's aligning himself. Mm-hmm. with all the great dreamers of Scripture, mm-hmm. and Joseph is one of them. Mm-hmm. Dr. Jones, tell us something about Joseph of Genesis 37. Well, Joseph is one of my heroes. Me too. Yes. Me too. One of my heroes. One of my heroes. He had a dream. He did. He was mm-hmm. going to be somebody. Yes. Mm. His brothers heard about the dream. They turned against him, sold him into slavery. Mm-hmm. He had a rough life. Remember, he sold into life. slavery. So yeah. All these analogies, mm-hmm. right? But he had a dream, Mm -hmm. and I think his experience shows, you know, the the, the three Ds, dreams, dungeons, diadems. Yeah, Mm. yeah. You got the dream. (laughs) You got to pay a price. You got to spend some time in the dungeon. Right, right, right. right, You got to fight. Yes. You got to resist. Yes. But hang in there. Mm -hmm. Soon and very soon, one of these days, you're going to wear the crown. Right, right, right. Wonderful. Dreams, dungeons, diadems. Amen. Now, Amen. And, Amen. and we see that again in, 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 in the experience of, uh, of Joseph. Uh, his, his experience is, is so paradigmatic, yeah. so instructive yes. for yes. us. Yes. It's just, just, just powerful. Mm-hmm. And uh, Dr. King, of course, he, uh, he didn't get to wear his diadem here. No, but, he uh, but we believe he will one we day. We believe yes. he will one day. Yeah, we but he suddenly had his dream, and he spent time in the dungeon. He mm-hmm. did. Yeah. Over 30, 30 times. 30 he arrests. Was, yeah, yeah, was yeah. in prison. Yes. Yeah. Literally. He literally was in the dungeon. That's right. Mm-hmm. That's right. And uh, then his life was snuffed out by the assassin's bullet. But, and he um, was 39 years old. 39 mm-hmm. years old. Not we, even 40 yet. We forget mm-hmm. how young a person this, this really is. Mm-hmm. Right. At 39 years mm-hmm. old, his, his life is mm-hmm. taken. He hadn't gotten to that midlife crisis back then yet. <laughs> yeah, yeah, He's absolutely. At 39 absolutely. years of age. Joseph, yeah. Joseph, one of the one of the great dreamers. I saw you nodding, Marcia, when Dr. Jones said, "One of my favorite characters, one of yours too, I assume." Yes. What what stands out about him to you? His resistance. Yeah. And steadfastness. Yeah. That's what really stands out, and his commitment to the Lord. Amen. Because he realized who gave him his dream. Yes. And what I like about Joseph's story is that when you go throughout and read it, Mm -hmm. you don't see perfection Mm -mm. the entire story. Mm -hmm. You see a young man who was boastful about his dream. Yes. Who had, some even might call a slight arrogance. Right, right, right. right. And sense of pride Mm -hmm. of his dream. He's got this beautiful jacket that he wears. Yes, he has the adoration of his father. Mm Mm-hmm. And he knows because he rests assured that the possibility will become a reality. Mm -hmm. So he knows Mm -hmm. that his dream will come to fruition. And so he's like, I'm ready. Right. But I've learned in life that, and I feel like Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. could say the same thing, is that when we are humbled and at our lowest point, Mm -hmm and we commit ourselves 100% to God, Mm -hmm. that's when things start to turn and start Mm -hmm. to change. But a lot of times during the humbling process, we like to give up. But what I love about Joseph is he never did. He had that mindset of though, even if they try to slay me, I'm still going to trust God and trust the process. Yes. Amen. Just as doc, doc, Dr. Excuse me, Martin Luther King trusted the process. He did. And he did. so that's what I love <clears throat> about Joseph. I mean, he was incriminated. He was sold. Mm-hmm. He was treated at the lowest of lows, but he kept his integrity. He kept his dream. He worked just as hard as he did for his father, mm-hmm. for Potiphar, for Pharaoh. He mm-hmm. worked. He did what God had called him to do, even when everything seemed gloom and dim, he still kept pressing towards the mark. Remarkable. And in the end, all of his trials and tribulations was building him to become the man that God (laughs) needed him to be to fulfill the dream, to serve in his leadership role. And I think of Dr. King in the same right. Mm -hmm. He was jailed, he was beaten, Mm -hmm. he was ridiculed. 
He was talked about. Mm -hmm. His family even questioned mm -hmm. and threatened him on mm -hmm. some areas, but he held steadfast mm -hmm. with boldness mm -hmm. because he knew that, again, that possibility, that dream was going to become a reality one Amen. day. Amen. Amen. That word still, I still in, 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 have yes. a dream. And I still yes. have a dream. Reminds me of Langston Hughes who mm. penned and said, Hold fast to dreams, for if dreams die, life becomes a broken-winged bird that cannot fly. Wow. Mm. wow. Hold fast to dreams. The Amen. Chinese have a proverb mm -hmm. that mm. runs this way. The poorest person is not the person without a scent, but the person without a dream. Wow. Oh, wow, 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 wow. The well, poorest powerful. person. That's the poorest person. Is mm. the person without a dream. So poorest hold fast person. to dreams. Poorest person. One, yeah. one Dr. Of the dream, that Dr. Dr. King did and set the example for us. Amen. Hold fast. Amen. Well, Joseph then was rich because he had, mm -hmm. he was rich in dreams. He was mm -hmm. rich in aspirations. Mm -hmm. one, one of the things that strikes me about him that so parallels the black experience mm -hmm. is at the end, the big reveal scene, right? Mm -hmm. The big reveal yes. scene. And the brothers show up mm -hmm. after... 24 years mm -hmm. of deception. Mm -hmm. So you're talking about an inordinate amount of time. Mm. And when they show up, Joseph, they're terrified. They figure out it's mm -hmm. Joseph. And there are lots of segues from the story. He, he can still speak Hebrew, so he's bilingual, right? But he's speaking to the Egyptian guard in whatever the language is that the Egyptians speak. So he's doing all that. And we can play off of that about how important bilingualism is today and all, all those yes. things. But... When they show up and they're terrified, he says something to them that secures that he is truly Joseph. He says, I am Joseph, your brother. Mm -hmm. After he puts everybody out, and it's a, it's a moving mm -hmm. scene, right? Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. he's weeping. He says, I am Joseph, your brother, wow. whom you sold into Egypt. Mercy. Mm -hmm. And, and the, the, the power of that, story, that, that statement is that for 23 years, there are only 10 people who actually knew what happened to Joseph. Benjamin mm. didn't know. Jacob didn't know but the 10 brothers knew that they lied to their dad. Yes. So this family secret, and they're terrified now because mm. the law of the land is the law of the talon, which is eye for an eye, tooth for a tooth. Right. Mm -hmm. And he says, no, no, don't, don't be afraid. He says, no, no. He says, you sold me, but God sent me. Mm. Mm -hmm. Oh, my goodness. Mm -hmm. That thing brings me to tears. Mm -hmm. You mm -hmm. sold me, but God sent me. Mm -hmm. I don't know exactly how God was in the African-American experience. Mm -hmm. right. I mm -hmm. don't know. Because mm -hmm. it's, mm -hmm. it's frightening to think that they sold us, but God sent us. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's right. frightening. Mm -hmm. right. But somehow in the midst of all that, Dr. Mm -hmm. King could see the overarching hand of yes. God. And then the forgiveness. Mm -hmm. Yes. He the says, you meant it for evil, but yes. God meant it for good. Amen. And here is the thing that I often say to audiences is that, look, the forgiveness took place before they showed up. How do we know? Because he had two children. Mm. And he named one Manasseh. God caused me to forget all about my sufferings. Mm. That's what it means. Mm -hmm. And the other was Ephraim. God caused me to prosper in the land of Amen. my captivity. Amen. Before they showed up, he had resolved it. Mm -hmm. So he mm -hmm. could pass it on to them. Dr. King, to me, strikes me as a man who was an agent of reconciliation and forgiveness. He was willing yes. to forgive because he believed in the dream so deeply. Yes. And it, it's humbling when you think about mm -hmm. it, don't you? Yes. We're going to have to wrap up. What A final statement from both of you as we think about Black History Month and we think about the journey and the life of Martin Luther King. I believe that we're all here on this earth to serve. Amen. The life of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. as well as Joseph shows us that in this service, we will hit hard times. Yes. We will hit pitfalls. We will possibly be sold out by yes. family members, by friends. But if we hold steadfast to our faith, hold steadfast to that dream, that possibility mm -hmm. that God has birthed within us Amen. and keep on in his service, all things will work together for our good. Amen. Amen. The Amen. theme of Black History Month this year is Thank Black... you, Evangelist. <laughs> <laughs> preacher, preacher, preacher. Thank you, Preacher. Thank the you, theme of Black History Month, of the Black History Month this year is Black Resistance. Ah. 
Uh-huh. And when we think of Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., mm-hmm. how he resisted yeah. the oppression yeah. and the racism and so forth. And nonviolently. In a, in a nonviolent yes. way. He resisted with love. He resisted mm-hmm. with forgiveness. Yes. He resisted with nonviolence. Yes. Um, that's Remarkable. how he chose to resist. Remarkable. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that's, that's the legacy that he left for us today yeah. as yeah. we continue to resist. Uh, oppression and racism, etc. Amen. 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 Thank mm-hmm. you. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Burden. Thank you, Dr. Jones. And thank you, audience, for tuning in. We've celebrated the life and the love and the legacy of Dr. Martin Luther King, who led a love revolution, as you mm-hmm. just said, Dr. Jones. He led a love revolution in ways that are inconceivable, and it must be celebrated and it must be kept alive. It became a paradigm for how others around the world should meet oppression and injustice. And there were voices all around him who were calling to meet violence with violence. But he said the strongest power in the world is the power of love. love. We commit you to that love today. The love of God continues to sustain, to fortify, and to strengthen us. And we pray that you will be blessed. Now, if you'd like to learn more about how we get to learn these wonderful things, please visit us at our website, www.oakwood.edu. And if you're interested in becoming a student at this space where these principles are taught by these wonderful teachers, then again, go to our website, www.oakwood.edu. And we'd love to have you join the Oakwood family and the Oakwood experience. May God bless you as you do your work. And thank you for tuning in to Windows on the Word.